We're back at Ty Park's place where among his thousands of lizards, there are some very special critters being housed here. I love learning about new species, and there is no better person to learn from than the man himself. So we are back here with Ty Park and his amazing reptile farm, lizard farm, whatever you want to call it, it's a lot of fun to be at. Today we're going to look at an animal that you don't normally see in private collections here in the United States. It looks like a green iguana, but it is not. It's gonna be a fun one to look at. I'm excited, Ty, and uh, you're gonna love this, so stay tuned. A good portion of my life has been all about action, which still holds true. But now I pour all that time and energy into wildlife conservation, education, and the pursuit of knowledge. This is Camp Kenner. <laughs> All right, so we are uh, we're hanging out here, and this is Iguana delicatissima, 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 delicatessen. I'm from New York. That's where we used to go to get our sandwiches, the deli. But it's this is a really, really unique and beautiful species in the genus Iguana. So in the genus right. Iguana, right. you have Iguana Iguana, which uh -huh. is your common green iguana. And then this variant, uh, totally Iguana different species. Yeah, yeah delicatissima. Yeah. Now, where are these guys found? Uh, Lesser Antillean Islands. Okay, so and that's group of islands. that's that's the smaller group of islands. The what are they? The Windward Islands on the. Uh, I don't know if that's correct. Don't ask me scientific stuff. Oh well, well unless it's about <laughs> no, lizards. <I'm> <laughs> no geography. <laughs> no it's the, the Lesser Antilles are the smaller group of islands just north of the South American continent. That's where oh. these animals can be found. So oh. you know Antigua, uh, you know th those those islands. Uh, but this is. You know, what are the differences for someone who does not know about this particular species? What are the differences? What are we looking for here? What makes them different than a well, guanaguana? Well, that's a funny thing because right now they're fighting the invasion of the green iguana. Oh, okay? boy. And they're hybridizing oh, with them. Gee. And so they're a, actually, we contribute to funds to uh, try to er eradicate some of the, uh, green the hybrid, on yeah, hybrid yeah. ones and green iguana. And um, basically, the tail, you look at the tail, green iguana tails are striped. Oh, okay. Okay? And this has no marking. Okay. That's one of the characteristics. The other one is iguana has a huge oh, defending that's right. scale. That's okay? right, they don't and have that. Yeah, this does not. Okay? okay? Those are the two very distinct features that you could differentiate them and there's of course other features also i noticed the, yeah. the bluntness of the right. snout is a little right. different right. than a green right. iguana as and well i look different and of course the dewlap look different very there's a lot of subtle differences okay. but the two big differences even amateur could tell is the striping here for green iguana and the, la yeah, the lack of that skin. Skin. Uh, all right so guys you know wayne you work with these animals a lot um you know, tell me a little bit about their care here on the farm. Is there anything special you have to do, or are they pretty much similar to a green? Uh, we feed them the same. Okay. Um, uh, we try to, we feed them every day. Okay, cool. Every day they get food, and a lot, what goes into is just observing the animal uh, while we're caring for them, too. As we're coming in, we're checking them out, we're looking, making sure that they're not fighting, they're not gotcha. uh, caught anywhere, stuck somewhere. So. Oh, there he goes. Maybe he wants something. No, he's just <laughs> mad at me. <laughs> oh, he's mad at you? <laughs> we, we don't want him fighting. You and know, sometimes they get territorial, so we, we got to watch for the fighting and gotcha. things. So we're, we're watching them every day. Okay. Every day. It's not like, oh, we feed them once and then disappear. move on and disappear. It's a constant, constant obser observation. Because, you know, this animal is not easy to get. Uh, I mean, in fact, these animals originated in Europe. Right. These were kept away by Jurgen. Okay. And... I think Austria. Um, one of the things that, uh, as a person that's kind of been well known, mm -hmm. people yeah. approach me with animals that they want to sell me. Okay. okay. And so, again, uh, this was kept the bread and with all the paperwork. And it, it takes maybe a month to two, three months to get them. Wow. But it's worth it. You know, you wait for the paperwork and all that. So, um, Wayne's yeah, got the touch, yeah, man. Yeah, and it's just awesome. very important. Um, you know, I don't go out looking for things now. Right. Because I have most of the animals I want here. Right, I understand. No, but I know I the get, situation. Yeah, I get so many people approaching me and say, hey, I have this. 
uh, and sometimes it's an animal that I can't really have because it's I know it that legality is just not there. Right. Okay. So, like for instance, right now I'm working with uh, a farm in uh, Mexico. Okay. Okay. Uh, I mean, I could get a lot of stuff illegally, obviously, right. because they're cross the border all the time. But even the pecnatus, I want to have the paper. Right. Okay. Well, it's always important. We stress this all the time. You know, sometimes you guys want people covet things so much, and you're actually hurting conservation. You're hurting these animals by supporting a black market trade on them. So what Ty's trying to explain is when you do things above board on the up and up, you're actually going to minimize the impact that poachers will have on these animals. You're trying to do things the right way. And this way, there's a, you know, it's a conscientious way of keeping these animals. And you, your whole purpose here at the farm is to breed these difficult to, to obtain animals here in the States so that, you know, you don't rely on poaching them out of the wild. You don't rely on black market sales. It's just a way to keep, you know, this whole industry, if that's what you want to call it, on the up and up. Yeah, you know? I, I, you know what, when I founded this farm, okay, 10 years ago, almost 10 years ago, one of the things that I wanted to do is produce animals that I like for the pet market, right? right. Okay, at the same time, I'm very conscientious about what, how they're doing in the wild. Okay, because most of the animals that I work with are rare animals. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so I want to give back. So I, I want to give back to the conservation of these uh, species right. and, and, and the other, you know. And then the third uh, reason why, or the, some of the, uh, the third mission that I had is to keep this farm as open as possible. Okay, that way, um, you know, we don't want to hide things. Right. Okay, people will come in and look at things. And I post frequently on Facebook, uh, you know, some of them are controversial, the way that I keep animals. But when I post something, that's something I believe in from the heart, mm -hmm. okay? And some people might say, okay, that's not the right way of doing it. But I believe it is, and I want to share that information with others. Gotcha. And so some people will get it and say, hey, let me try it this way. And for most, once you try it, for most people it works. But I'm willing to take the criticism, okay, because when you're always trying to push science and push, you know, try to get not complacent about just keeping it the way everybody tell you. Right. I want to push the envelope so that these guys would benefit. Right. Okay. Because it's not a perfect science. There's always no. going to be a new, exactly. something new. Exactly. Someone may do something a little different. And right. that's how I always learned. Right. I'd visit right. guys like right. you. I'd visit other keepers. That's right. why we do the show. It's so that we can give you a broad base of information. The proof is in the fact that the animal's healthy. The animal reproduces. Exactly. Uh, that's important. May I? Do you mind if I get hands on this little dude? Uh, did you wash your hand? This guy. <laughs> this guy's starting to sound like Crocodile Kyle. Look at that. So my first time ever holding iguana. Delicatissima. Delicatissima. I love saying that too. Yeah, like. you do, right? It just rolls <laughs> off the tongue. Well, another interesting species, and as you mentioned, it's a male. You can kind of focus yep. in right here. You can see the, hem the hemipene bulge right there. So that's really neat. So uh, how much longer till this animal's a, a sexually mature animal? You know what? Well, I would say he can breed, obviously. Yeah, right? he's there. Yeah, but for him to be fully mature, it'll take another two, three, four years. Even. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, there you have it, guys. You're seeing something you don't normally get to see unless you went down to the Lesser Antilles. And uh, very important that we keep up the work here that you're doing. Congratulations, Wayne. I know you have a hand in this as well. You got him to eat, so you got the magic touch. <laughs> yep, you did. Uh, and we're going to wrap this one up with a beautiful shot of that. Look at that face, guys. Come on. That is a cool looking lizard. See you guys next time.